This is my inquiry project for the pool party scenario. Our class had to look at the idea of someone running and doing a cannonball into a pool. And we had to think about a way that we could use some maths and science understanding around this situation. My inquiry question was, how long would it take to fill up the pool? Before I started doing my calculations, I had to think about the type of information I would need. The variables I identified were the size of the pool, the amount of water in it, how fast the water comes out of the tap, and how long it would take to fill up the pool. All of these things could change depending on the numbers that I use. The rates I was going to need in order to do some calculations were the length and width of the pool, the length, width and depth of the pool to find the volume. I needed to know how many litres per second were coming out of the tap and I had to use those litres per second in alignment with the volume to figure out how long it was going to take to fill up the pool. As a starting point, I wasn't sure how big to make my pool, so I did a quick search about the standard size of swimming pools in Australia. This helped me decide that my pool was going to be 6 metres by 3 metres with a depth of 1.7 metres. This was a diagram I used to help me do my calculations. First I calculated the area of the top of the pool, which was the length times the width. So 3 metres times 6 metres told me that it was 18 metres squared. I was then able to calculate the volume of the pool by looking at the area times the depth. So 18 metres squared times a depth of 1.7 metres gave me 30.6 metres cubed. I already knew that one cubic metre could hold 1,000 litres of liquid. So I times my cubic metres by 1,000 and that told me that I would need 30,600 litres to fill the pool. The next variable I wanted to explore was how fast the water comes out of a tap. To do this, I created an experiment. I had a five litre bottle, a stopwatch, and a garden hose. The method I came up with for my experiment was that I would make sure the bottle was empty, put the hose in the bottle, turn on the hose, start the timer, and wait until the water reached the five litre mark. Then I would stop the timer turn off the hose and repeat the process three more times. This is the data I collected as a result of my experiment. The first time I filled up the container it took 29 seconds, the second time it took 28 seconds and the third time it took 33 seconds. After I did my experimentation I evaluated some of its strengths and weaknesses. One of the variables I hadn't thought about was that the water took different times to come through the pipe. The first time it seemed like it took the water a really long time, whereas the second time there was already water in the pipe, so it seemed to go a lot quicker. Another variable I noticed was on the third try when I dropped the hose and had to quickly pick it up and put it into the bottle. That cost me a few seconds. Some of the improvements that I could have done for my experiment would be to turn on the water first and then put the hose in the bottle. That way the water would already be running as soon as I put it into the container and I would have got a more consistent result. It was also really tricky to do all of this by myself. So I think if I'd used another person to hold the timer so that I could have had both hands, I wouldn't have dropped the hose and using different people means I would have had better data. I used the data from my experiment to calculate the average of water that was coming out of the tap. I added 29 plus 28 plus 33 and divided it by the three attempts that I made to get an average of 30 seconds to fill up 5 litres. I was then able to calculate how much water was coming out per second by dividing 5 litres over the 30 seconds it had taken to fill up that amount, which gave me 0.166 litres per second. As part of my science investigation for the project, I had to think of what type of water I would fill the pool with. In my research, I found out that there's three common types of water. Mineral water, which comes from the ground, salt water, which comes from the ocean, and tap water, which comes from the tap. Mineral water is collected from the ground. It's completely natural because there's been nothing added to it by humans, which means there's no chemicals. In most cases you can drink mineral water, though it usually is recommended that it's flowing because if it's stagnant it can be a breeding ground for harmful bacteria. Salt water is also natural and you can find it in the ocean. It doesn't have any chemicals in it, but it does have a really high amount of salt in it, so you can't drink it. Tap water is not natural. It contains chemicals like fluoride and some chlorine. You can usually drink it in most places. One of the interesting things about a pool is that because the water is stagnant, which means it's not running in any direction, it can be more likely to build up bacteria. So no matter what your pool is made out of, you have to find a way to manage that. One way that people manage it is that they add chlorine and this stops bacteria from growing in the water. 
This also means you can't drink the water because high amounts of chlorine can be poisonous. For people who use salt water in their pools, they don't need to add chlorine. And that's because the salt that's already in the water has a natural chlorine substitute. So bacteria can't grow in salt water. For my final calculation, I was now able to figure out how long it would take to fill up the pool. In my first calculation, I'd already figured out that my pool was going to hold 30,600 litres. I'd also calculated that the hose puts out 0.16 litres per second. To do my calculation, I had to figure out the total litres and divide it over the speed of the water. I divided 30,600 over 0.16. This gave me 191,250 seconds, which I was able to convert into 53 hours and 12 minutes, which answered my inquiry question, how long would it take to fill up the pool?